Isaiah chapter 40 tonight, familiar passage to all of us, one of my favorites really, Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28, verse 28, in the Old Testament right about in the middle of your Bible, Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 28. Praise the Lord. Just to minister a little bit uh, here tonight. Praise God. And in verse 28 of chapter 40 of, of Isaiah, it says, Have you not known and have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? Aren't you glad that never, God never gets tired? I know we might get weary. We might get worn out. We might get tired. But God never does. Amen. But don't you know that? It's making a statement. Don't you know? Have you not known? Have you not heard about the everlasting God, the the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. It says his, un his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But it says in verse 31, but you know the verse. You can help me say this here tonight. But those who wait on the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as like, like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. I want to talk a little bit here tonight how to have a renewed strength. Heavenly Father, as I come to you in the name of the Lord, I just pray for the unction, the anointing, the power of thy spirit to minister thy word tonight. Father, I want the fire. I want the Holy Ghost. Father, I don't want to do anything apart from you as I stand behind this sacred desk. I pray that we just have open hearts and ears to receive of thy word tonight, Father. I thank you, God, for the body of Christ that's come out on a Sunday night to worship you, to honor you, to hear the word of God, to fellowship with one another. I pray to pray together. Father, I thank you, Lord. Father, may you be glorified as we lift up the name of Jesus. I pray that you'll draw men unto you. And I thank you, Father, and I pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. You may be seated tonight, and the Lord bless you. Praise God. I love the Word of God. I love the Bible. Praise God. I want the Word of God to feed us. And, and uh, I want to talk a little bit how tonight how to have a renewed strength and renewed strength in God. You know, in a day and time when many Christians today, I believe, are becoming weak. I see it all around us. I've talked to other ministers or the pastors, uh, and uh, they become weary and tired. But it's possible for people like us to experience a supernatural, renewed strength and power that comes only by God. I said it's possible that you and I tonight, any time, can re receive a renewed strength and power that comes from God, power from on high. I, I want to say this here tonight, that God did not call the church to be weak. God did not call the church to be feeble. And yet I find that many people are weak today. Many people are feeble today. But that's not what God called called us. You know that God, we can have a faith to believe God for anything. Do you know that? I said we can have a faith to believe God for anything. The church ought to be filled with the power of the Spirit of God. Thank God we're on this side of the cross. Thank God that we have the totality of the Word of God. Thank God that we have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Thank God that we have the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. If there's ever a time for the church to be filled with God, ever time for the church to be filled with power, ever time for the church to be strengthened, it's today and it is now. This is not the time to throw in the towel. This is not the time to give up. This is not the time to be weak or to be feeble, but this is the time to stand strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The Bible tells us to do that in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. I want you to know, as our sister said here tonight, that thank God that the veil has been torn in half from top to bottom, that we have access to the throne of God, that we can pray, that we can call on God anytime, any place, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days out of the year. Whether you be here at church or at home or at the workplace or in your car, driving to and fro someplace. I want you to know that we can call upon the name of the Lord our God. No, I can say that the church, this is not the time for the church to be weak or the church to be feeble, but this is the time for the church to rise up in the power of the Spirit of God and declare the Word of God by faith. Amen. I want to take you to the book of Mark, the Gospel of Mark in chapter 16. Now I want you to look with me here in verse in verse, in verse 15. Uh, he said, well, let's go to verse 14. I said, later he appeared that's Jesus appeared to the eleven. Mark 16 and verse 14. He appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table and he rebuked their what? Their unbelief and hardness of heart. We're talking about the disciples didn't believe that Jesus had risen from the grave. He rebuked them because of their unbelief and the hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had been uh, seen him after he had risen. But then Jesus said in verse 15 and he said to them go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 16. He who believes and is baptized will be saved 
and he does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they'll cast out demons. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly, it'll by no means hurt them. They'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Let me tell you something, my beloved. When I read that, I don't see a weak church. I don't see a weak people, but I believe there's a people there that will believe in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said the works that he does that we'll do also and even more so. That's the church of the living God. No, my beloved, I'm telling you here. Amen. Uh, if there's ever a time we can be strengthened, renewed in the Lord and in the power of his might. But there are conditions to receiving this renewed strength that takes something of ourselves to receive it. As I even talked about it this morning, that we can't sit back and do nothing, have everybody else do it for us, but it takes something of ourselves. It's going to take faith. It's going to take seeking God. we got to knock on heaven's door, not to become passive or lackadaisical. Amen. But seek the face of the Lord and seek him while he may be found, the Bible says. It takes believing God, but also it takes waiting. It takes tarrying and waiting on the Lord. One of the hardest things I believe for Christians to do is to wait on God. You know why? Because I believe that there are many distractions today that get in the way. Things have changed over the past, I would say, 30 or 40 years with the church. Even with our modern technology that's supposed to make things a whole lot easier, I find that today that we're battling this one thing. There's a whole lot more distractions that keep us from waiting, that keep us from praying, that keep us from tearing, that keep us from seeking the Lord like we ought to be. Amen. Like I talked about this morning, it's time for the church to fast. It's time for the church to pray. It's time for the church to rise up and be the church that God has called her to be. But there are a lot of distractions that get in the way of what God wants us to do. And therefore, we are powerless. And therefore, we become weak. And therefore, we become spiritual feeble, if you will. But by, listen, by not waiting, we miss out on many spiritual life-changing encounters with God. Let me give you this quote here tonight by E.M. Bounds. E.M. Bounds said, I think Christians fail so often to get answers to their prayers because they do not wait long enough on God. I want us to look at that again. E.M. Bounds got up at 4 o'clock every morning. He got up at 4 o'clock and he prayed to 8 o'clock in the morning, four hours out of the day. The first part of his day, he set his face to seek the face of God and to pray. I think Christians fail uh, often to get answers to their prayer because they do not wait long enough on God. Mm, my beloved, are you hearing me tonight? I, I think about Daniel. You can look at Daniel. I know the Bible said that he prayed. He waited on God for 21 days, Daniel prayed. Daniel sought the face of the Lord. He didn't have an answer, but he prayed. He waited on God. But you know what? There were there was a spiritual warfare in the heavenlies. I don't know if Daniel realized that, but I know this one thing. He didn't pray for 10 minutes. He didn't pray for 10 hours. He didn't pray for 10 days. Bible said he prayed for three weeks. He prayed for 21 days. I want us to look at Daniel chapter 10 and verse 10. And it said, suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. You see this here? Here the presence of God comes to Daniel as Daniel has sought the face of God for 21 days. Daniel has been praying. Daniel has been seeking. He is persistent. He's not giving up. He's not throwing in a towel, but he's believing God by faith. He doesn't quit. He doesn't back down. He doesn't quit all my friend, but he trusts God and he continues to pray. And it said in verse 10, suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. We need that touch of God once again in the church. We need the awful dread or the fear of the Lord once again in the church, in the body of Christ, as we even talked about here this morning. And he said to me, oh, Daniel, man, greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright for I have now been sent to you. He said, while he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. He was in the presence of God. And then it said in verse 12, then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for, for he says, from the first day that you set your heart to understand, to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. And then in verse 13, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the king of Persia. We understand that there's a great spiritual demonic warfare, a fight. I realize that in the heavenlies. And I know, listen, we may not be able to see everything, but I know that we can sense that at times as we're praying. Sometimes it might be hard to pray. When it's hard to pray, I just want to encourage the church to pray harder. Sometimes there might be a spiritual oppression, a spiritual darkness that comes upon you. Maybe there's an attack against you, but my beloved friend, thank God that we have access to the throne of God as Daniel did, but I find that Daniel did didn't give up, and Daniel was persistent in his praying until God answered him. I think that we got to set ourselves in a position to pray, that we're going to pray until we hear from heaven, that we're going to pray until God answers. So maybe there's a warfare, maybe there's a battle in the 
heavenlies, a battle over souls, a battle over different situations, my friend. But thank God that we have access. Thank God we have the power of the name of Jesus Christ that we can pray and call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I know that God hears. I know that he does. Now, sometimes I think I know the devil tries to talk us out of thinking that God hears our cry. But I know that God hears the first time. I know that God hears the first time. Amen. How many know have been blessed by the wonderful presence of God as you've gotten away, maybe in your prayer closet, and you've gotten away and you've sought the face of the Lord and God showed up. Amen. God showed up. How many ever prayed and you felt the resistance when you prayed? How many ever done that? I have to. There have been many times when I've been praying I felt the resistance when I prayed. You know what? That's the enemy trying to hinder you and keep you from seeking the face of the Lord. But if you'll persist, if you'll keep praying, if you'll keep knocking on heaven's door, if you'll keep seeking God, I know that God will answer your prayer. I know that God hears your cry. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God if we only understood what's going on in the heavenlies, we might be more prone to pray and to seek the face of God. But you know what? I see people today. I see people today. You know what I see them doing? I see people giving up. That's right. I see people giving up. I want to know why. Why are people giving up? Why are people that once used to be great prayer warriors, they're faithful to God, faithful in worship, faithful to the Lord, but now they're giving up as if they become lackadaisical. You know why, my friend? I'm going to say this before I should say it. It's probably because of unbelief. We don't believe anymore like we once believed, my friend. But I want you to know that that Bible tells me that God doesn't change. God doesn't change. People have changed. Times have changed. The church has changed. But I can tell you, God doesn't change. Listen to me, my friend. You can have the move of God. You can have the outpouring of God. You can have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You can have a personal revival. You can have an encounter with God that will change you for eternity and forever. If you'll seek Him, if you'll press in, if you don't give up, if you don't become filled with unbelief, you can have the touch of God like Daniel did, my friend. Praise God. Now, praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hear me to church tonight. Amen. I want to give you a quote from R.A. Torrey that said this. He said, oh, men and women, pray through, pray through. Do not just begin pray to pray and pray a little while and then throw up your hands and quit, but pray and pray and pray until God bends the heavens and comes down. Hallelujah. I love that. Amen. Don't pray just a little bit and then throw your hands up and quit, but pray until God bends the heavens. That's the kind of praying I'm talking about. That You want to be renewed in God. You want to be strengthened in the Lord. That that's what it's going to take. I don't know how many people listen to this anymore, but I'm telling you, there's no microwave thing to this. This is the word of God. This is God's prescribed order. This is what the Bible tells us to do. We ought to pray. The church ought to grab a hold of the hymn of Jesus' garment, and we ought to pray, my friend, until heaven bends. I said we ought to pray until we know that God has heard us. Amen. Now, let me tell you tonight. Let me take you. Let me read a little bit of scripture with you in 1 Kings, if you would. And let's go to chapter 18. And you know the story here about Elijah. He just called down fire from heaven and consumed the sacrifice, killed 400 prophets of Baal. I mean, it's like revivals come. And now he goes, amen, to Mount Carmel, hallelujah, to end the drought. It hadn't rained for three and a half years. And in verse 41 of 1 Kings chapter 18, it said, Elijah said to Ahab, go up and eat and drink, for there's a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and then bowed his head on the ground and put his face between his his knees. You kind of got a picture there. That's the only kind of picture I found on Google that anything that was right towards this is about the position that Elijah had, the prophet of God. And he began to seek the face of God. He positioned himself to pray. I'm not getting up until I hear from heaven. I'm not getting up until God answers. And so you see the position that he prays in. Amen. He put his face between his knees and he prayed and he said to his servant, go up now and look toward the sea. And so he went up and looked and said, there's nothing. Seven times he said, go again. So he sent his servant out there and he said, I want you to see if you see anything. Comes back, he says, I don't see anything. Elijah said, I'm going to keep on praying. You just go again. So a servant goes out again a second time. And he comes back, he said, Elijah, I don't see anything. I know that can be discouraging at times. You don't see the result of your praying. But Elijah said, you know what? I positioned myself to pray. I'm not budging. I'm not moving off of this mountain until God hears my cry. And so he sent him out again a third time. A third time. You want me to go again, Elijah? That's right. I want you to go a third time. So he goes out again. Maybe that servant's thinking, this isn't going to do any good. I do this over 
over and over and over. I keep doing what that preacher says, and nothing ever seems to happen or come of it. But I'll go ahead and do what he says. And so he goes out a third time, and he comes back to Elijah. He said, I'm sorry to tell you, but it's the same old answer. Nothing out there. Elijah said, that's all right. I'm going to keep on praying. I know my God hears. I know my God answers. Elijah said, my God's provided me before. Before My God will provide for me again. Glory to God. So he sends him out again a fourth time. He goes out a fourth time, comes back and says, Elijah, it's just the same old thing over and over and over. You tell us to pray, but nothing comes of it. You tell us to pray, but nothing happens. You tell us to pray, but I'm not getting an answer. Elijah said, that's okay. I know my God's faithful. This is what I want you to do. We're going to come up with a new plan. And the servant says, okay, Elijah, I'm all ears. What kind of plan do you have? And he said, I want you to go out again. And I want you to look. He said, oh, man, I did that last time. He said, that's right. He said, we're going to do what that Bible says. He said, go out again. So he goes out a fifth time. And he comes back. And he said, Elijah, it's still nothing. There's nothing, nothing in the air. No cloud whatsoever. He said, that's all right. We're going to keep on praying. That's it, church. That's the kind of determination I'm talking about. You want renewed strength. You want power from on high. You want the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You want something of God. You want to bend heaven. You've got to have that kind of determination that Elijah had to pray. I wish somebody heard me tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what God's trying to get to the church. Some of us have thick heads. Include myself. You know that? But I'm telling you, praise God. Amen. That's what God's trying to say. So he sends him out a fifth time. He comes back. He said, I don't see anything. Elijah said, all right, we're going to keep on praying. It's not over till it's over. We're going to keep on seeking the face of the Lord. I know you know the story, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Maybe it'll boost some of your faith here tonight. So he goes out a sixth time. Six times he goes out over and over and over, doing the same old thing, coming to church, worshiping the Lord, hearing the priest of the Word of God, praying with the pastor, praying for one of the same old things, Sunday morning, Wednesday night, Sunday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, same old thing, same old thing. Sometimes it looks like nothing's happened. Sometimes it seems like there's a drought. Sometimes it seems like it's dry. But Elijah said, listen, I know you've been six times, and I know it gets kind of redundant, but I know that we're doing what that Bible said. God told us we're to seek his face. God told us to be persistent. God told us that we're to cry out to him, and so I'm going to send you again, and he goes out of seventh time but this time it would be different he saw something in the sky he saw something out there and it was a cloud the size of a man's hand oh glory to God and he came back and he told Elijah and Elijah said I'll take it that's the hand of God that's the answer to our prayers it's about to rain it's about to rain it's about to rain hallelujah you know what happens, you know, I mean to tell you, you come, and this has happened here at this church. You've come here, and you know, now I'm going to tell you something. There have been times the devil's fought me all week, and I felt oppressed all week. There have been times the devil told me I was defeated. The devil tell me I'm not doing anything any good. The devil tell me nobody's going to show up. The devil tell me nobody's going to listen. Now I'd come into that service defeated. I came to church defeated. I'd come in on Sunday morning defeated. That's right. We've been praying day in and day out, going out all the time, and I don't see any evidence of it. I don't see nothing out there. I don't see the cloud of the size of a man's hand, but all that Sunday morning, when you least expect it, all of a sudden, when you begin to pray and begin to worship the Lord, all of a sudden, the Lord surprises us, and he comes, that cloud that was up in the sky moves in the church, hallelujah. That cloud, that's the Holy Ghost, that's the rain, that's the water, amen, that's the living life of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that cloud moves in, and when we least expect it, all of a sudden, God poured out. Oh, it rained. Hallelujah. The form of the latter rain. God poured out. Praise God. And we were renewed and revived. But listen to me. If we had not sought God, if we had not prayed prior to that, if we had not been persistent, we'd have never had that cloud. We'd have never had that rain. Come on, church. Hallelujah. You know what I'm talking about here tonight. We'd have never had it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, hallelujah. I said we'd have never had it. Oh, turn with me in the gospel according to Luke. Praise God. Help me preach this here tonight. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. If I don't get a shout out of you, I'm going to have you come up preach tonight, all right? Praise the Lord. What about this? Jesus said in Luke chapter 18, you know the story, the parable of the persistent widow. And then he spoke a parable to them that men ought always to pray and not lose heart. Don't faint. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Amen. I know, I know it can be hard. And I know the devil fights it hard. But the reason why the devil fights it hard is because God's about to bless God's about to answer. God's about to move. God's about to pour out. God's about to bring revival. God's about to move in your heart. God's about to baptize in the Holy Ghost. God's about to pour it out, church. Hallelujah. Remember, Elijah told Ahab, get ready for the rain, an abundance of rain. It hadn't rained yet. That was faith speaking. All right. And now what do you see with this widow here? It says here, this widow woman here, verse 2, saying that there in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man, didn't care, didn't fear the Lord, cared nothing about people, didn't care anything about this woman. Now there was a woman in that city, and she came to him saying, get justice for me, my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, I don't fear God, and I sure don't care anything about you, woman. And then he said, verse 5, yet because this woman troubles me, I will avenge her less by her continual, look at the word continual, circle the word continual, coming, she weary me, or did she wear me out? In other words, she was persistent. She kept knocking on heaven's door, if you would. That's what Jesus is trying to show us. Oh, I know those are people that say if you pray them more than one time, that that's doubt and unbelief and not faith. No, my beloved, that Bible tells me that we're to keep on. Jesus tells us that we're to be persistent. Hallelujah. Praise God and don't throw in the towel and don't give up. Don't stop praying. Don't stop knocking on heaven's door. Don't stop being faithful. Don't stop crying out to God. There's about to be a cloud. Glory. Somebody shout tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night? Notice this. Shall God not uh, 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 avenge his own elect Shall not God avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily, the Bible says. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? My friend, I pray that we don't lose heart. I pray that we don't lose in faith. I pray that we'll continue to believe God. Listen, whatever the need is in your life, whatever it is that you're going through, I want you to take these scriptures and read them and study them, and I want your faith to be encouraged and strengthened and built because of this. Thank God. Isaiah 40 and 30 when it speaks of waiting on God with faith. It speaks of waiting on God with anticipation. It, me- it speaks of waiting on God with hope. There's an anticipation as I wait on the Lord. It speaks of one who desires God. It speaks of one that wants God. Time waiting on God. It's never time wasted. Never. And the reason the church is becoming weak and powerless and ineffective is because it no longer waits on the Lord. I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. It no longer waits. Oh, we'll wait at McDonald's. We'll wait at Burger King. We'll wait in all kinds of things. When it comes to God, why aren't we waiting? You know what I find with Elijah? He waited, amen. He waited. He praised praised God that he waited. He positioned himself to pray, and God did answer. I see that Daniel waited 21 days, but God did answer. I'm finding this, that those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. There's something about people that wait upon the Lord. Thank God for those that wait upon God. Great men and women of God through the histories and past centuries that have waited on the Lord that God used and they did great exploits for God because they waited on the Lord. Amen. And may the church come back to waiting. Why? Why is it the church has lost its spiritual strength and stamina? Why? Because we have put other things before God. It talks about priorities. We mentioned that a little bit here this morning about priorities. We have misprioritized God. You can go ahead and put that up there, Brother John. We have put a lesser value on God's presence and a greater value 
you on earth's activity, somebody shout now. You know this is true. This is what's going on. Other things take the place of God. Sports take the place of God. Hobbies take the place of God. Games take the place of God. Family time takes the place of God. School takes the place of God. Work and hobbies, all these things. There's nothing wrong with these in and of themselves. The problem is we put those before God. The problem is we worship those things more than we worship God. That's what happens. The problem is we live for those things rather than living for God. That's the problem. And so there's always competition. Always now. Competing. You know, let me say, tell you what Jesus said. You want to hear what Jesus said? Let's, let's go to the, the gospel according to Matthew tonight and look at verse chapter 6. And, and let's look at what Jesus said about this. Jesus said in chapter 6 in Matthew, verse 20, 24, chapter 6, verse 24 of Matthew. And he says this. Let's look at this verse right here, and you tell me what you think this means. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't serve both. you got to make a decision, what Jesus is saying. You, you, listen, you can't serve both. We have people today who are trying to serve both. And, and, and the, but what happens here, Jesus says you can't. He said you'll be loyal to one and not loyal to the other one. You'll, you'll despise the one. You'll, whatever it might be. You, no one can serve two masters. He'll either hate the one or be, love the other or also be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Look at verse 25. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you'll, you'll drink, nor about your body, what you'll put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? clothing, then we're caught up in these things. We're caught up in the natural things of life. When Jesus is trying to say, get your, be caught up in Christ, be caught up in God, be caught up in the spiritual things of the Lord. Look at verse 26. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. He says, are you not more value than they? Yeah, you are. Which by you of worrying can add one cubit to a statue? I know I sure can't. I tell you that, I can't. Amen. If worrying could cause me to grow, I'd probably be pretty high, pretty tall by now. He says, which you by worrying can add a cubit to your statue? He said, so why do you worry? about clothing. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Won't God take care of you? Won't the Lord provide for your needs? Won't God take care of your, your situation in your life? Verse 31, therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek or the lost seek these things for you he says your heavenly father knows that you need all these things God knows that you need these but then Jesus says in verse 33 this is the priority right here but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then he says all these things what all things all the things we just talked about everything all the need and necessities of your life God will take care of that in other words sometimes we get the cart before the horse and we're all worried about everything else we have the Martha syndrome we're worried about everything else when Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus in the presence of God listening to the word of God and she's worshiping him and I, I'm not saying that we become passive I'm not saying that we don't work I'm not saying we become lazy that's not what I'm saying I'm just saying that our heart our life our desire should be Jesus it should be the Lord the greatest thing of all things is God the king of kings and lord of lords he is my love he is my life he is my savior my devotion is to God life consists more than just the, the, the temporal things that only last for a certain season but what Jesus says I want you to focus on eternity I want you to focus on God himself Verse 34, therefore do not worry about tomorrow, nor tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own thing. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble, my friend. In other words, we want to seek the Lord first. We want to prioritize, make sure that Jesus is first in our hearts and in our lives. We can turn, turn I can turn to the book of Colossians tonight in chapter 3. If then you were raised, verse 1, then uh, with Christ, if you were then raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the the earth. Now we talk, talking about your mind, your affections, your heart. Set those on things above for you died and your life is hidden in Christ in, with Christ in God. For when Christ who is our life appears then also will appear with him in glory. Hallelujah. Now I'm just finding here that people are misprioritizing and they're going to edit things before God thinking those things are more important than the Lord himself my friend. Don't be like the foolish virgins that ran out of oil that didn't take care of the spiritual needs in their life. My Lord, goodness gracious I know 
time is going pretty fast here, but I find that you had five foolish and five wise virgins, and uh, we find that the five foolish didn't bring extra oil with them, and the five wise did. They did not take care of their spiritual matters, but they let those things go, my friend. They, one, at one time, they had the oil. At one time, they had the Holy Ghost. That don't pay, People say, well, they weren't. Yes, they were saved. They had the Holy Ghost. They had the light. They had the fire, my God. Their lamps were lit. Uh, oh, but when the bridegroom delayed, uh, they ran out of oil. Their lights, their lamps went out. Oh, Lord, I got to read this here tonight. Go to Matthew chapter uh, 25 real quick. Go to Matthew 25 real quick. And just look at this. Look at verse 1. It says, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out and meet the bridegroom. And now five of them were wise and five were foolish. And those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. All right? They were unprepared. But the wise... The wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps, but the bride, while the bridegroom was delayed, listen to this, they all slumbered and slept, and at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming to go out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose, trimmed their lamps. Look at verse 8, And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying to them, Lest No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. In other words, get refilled. Get refilled your vessel with the oil. But while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, the Lord came, and those who were ready, listen, I love this. Listen to verse 10. A key word here is the word ready. Those who were ready. Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Are your vessels filled with oil? Is your lamp burning brightly? Went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. And afterwards, listen, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Lord, Lord, they're not going to open to us. We want in. But he answered and said, As surely I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. How did that happen, my beloved friends? How did they run out of oil? How did they run out of oil? They had oil at one time. They were all lit. The lamps were lit. How did they run out? How did their light go out? You mean their light, they had a light at one time? Yes, the lamps were lit at one time, but then it went out. How did they run out of oil? Right now, I believe that we're in the delay. I don't know about you, but I believe that we're in the delay, and I don't think that we can let down in our spiritual, I don't think we can let our spiritual guard down when it comes to our relationship with the Lord. Don't let anything cut you off. Don't let anything get in between you and your relationship with the Lord. In other words, we got to persevere. You can't quit. Don't start being unfaithful. Don't quit praying. Don't quit worshiping. Don't quit seeking the face of the Lord. Don't stop in your relationship with God. You've got to continue on. This is not the time to throw in the down. This is not the time to become weak. This is not the time to become passive. But this is the time, if ever, that we ought to pray and seek God and draw ever closer to the Lord if we've ever needed to. Amen. Now, coming back to Isaiah, Isaiah, it speaks of a certain kind of people. These kinds of people are the ones who will receive the renewed strength, the ones that, that wait on God as we wait, as we believe, as we trust, as we pray, as we meditate upon his word. God will exchange our strength for his strength. Praise God. Amen. These are the people that don't give up. Uh, these are the people that don't quit. Praise God. I know in Psalm 27 and 14 it talks about uh, that we are to pray that we in fact it says wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait I say on the Lord. I want to encourage the church here tonight to be to, to not give up and to not lose heart and, and, and to have and to be and to have courage and to wait upon the Lord and God will strengthen your heart and God will touch you and God will help you and God will guide you. Praise God. I know Elijah ran past Past Ahab's chariot. This was a supernatural power and strength that came upon him. He could not do this in himself. He could not do this in his own strength. But it's really a type of the Spirit of God upon the church. There's no way we can do what God's asking us to do in our own power, in our own mind. But God says you don't have to do it alone. If you'll trust me, I'll pour out my power. I'll pour out the oil. I'll pour out the rain. I'll pour out my spirit. I'll pour out my power and strengthen the church of the living God. Hallelujah. That God God is not dead, but alive. Praise God, and he'll renew you. Praise the Lord as you walk in the Holy Ghost, as you are obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that God will strengthen, and God will renew you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I don't know. I love that passage there. I mean, Elijah runs past Ahab's chariot. Really? <laughs> I mean, it's incredible, don't you think? This wasn't what, Hussein Bolt that runs 25 or 27 miles an hour before I retired? Amen. I don't know how fast uh, Elijah ran, but I know this. He ran in the might of God. And the problem is the church today is we're trying to run in our own might. 
We're trying to do this in our own strength. And it's impossible in our own strength. That's why we need to rely on the Holy Ghost. We need reliance upon the Lord. Amen. Think about the day of Pentecost. They waited. They tarried. They prayed. They worshiped for 10 days. Like I said, it wasn't 10 minutes. It wasn't just a week. But they waited for 10 days. They waited on God. I, I can't. Listen. I Listen. I, I love the Bible. I, I just, I don't know. But I see the early church. They, they, the 120 of them that waited on God. That, that did what Jesus said to do. And waited for the promise of the Father. They wanted to be endued with power from on high. They knew that they couldn't do this without the supernatural strength of the Lord. Folks, I, I don't know what's going to get us to understand that there's no way that we can do this in our own power. They didn't leave. This appointed, my friend, the Holy Ghost was poured out upon them, all 120 of them, and they were divided tongues as a fire that sat upon them. They had the visible presence of God upon them. Talk about a church service, praise God. They were renewed and ignited, and, a, and they had a fire for Jesus, and 3,000 souls were saved because of it. Listen to what E. Stanley Jones said this. He said this, when prayer fades out, prayer fades out. He says, power fades out. When prayer fades out, power fades out. We we are as spiritual as we are prayerful. No more, no less. I want to ask you this here tonight. How many of us really have a dedicated, devoted prayer life with the Lord Jesus Christ? I can tell you. You want me to name them? Yeah, it does make a difference. I can tell when a person's been in prayer and when a person hasn't been in prayer. And I want to say this. A lot of us at Word of Life are not in prayer. Don't blame the pastor and don't blame the worship team. Don't blame your teacher. You're the one that didn't study for the test. You hear me tonight? I am telling you the truth that a great deal of people are good about pretending to be Christians or religious, but they don't pray. And I can name them. I can go down a list. I'm not going to, but I could. You see, the church is powerless today because we don't spend time with the Lord. When prayer fades out, power fades out. And there you got it right there. E. Stanley Jones said it. When prayer fades out, power fades out. I know that prayer has faded out for your lack of hunger. I know that prayer has faded out for your lack of dedication. I know the prayer has faded out for your lack of desire. I know the prayer has faded out for the lack of power. I know it has. And I, I don't know if preaching this is probably not going to do any good. I, I don't know. Maybe it will. I don't know. It's just there's, there's thousands of messages I guess we can dig up out of the archives that I dealt with prayer and persistence many times through the years. But when prayer fades out, power fades out. We are as spiritual as we are prayerful, and that is the truth. No more, no less. No more. No less. I believe a lot more people could be baptized in the Holy Ghost and have renewed power if they would just learn to wait on God, if they would learn to pray. I, 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 I don't know. I, 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 I just, uh, I, I, where's the hunger? Where's the desire? Where's the anticipation? Where's the faith? Praise God. Man, we could meet under an oak tree and God would meet us there if we were hungry for God. We could meet in an old beat-up garage, an old run-down garage. If you were hungry for the Lord, I have been, and I talked about this, I believe it was last Sunday night, I can't remember, but I talked about I have been in different parts of the world. I have been in the jungle where no car can get to, no vehicle can get to. You can only walk there. I have been into places where most people would not be willing to go but preach the Word of God, and the power and the presence of God would come there. Might have 25 or 30 people, but the power and the presence of God would be there. Why? Because they were hungry for God. They were hungry for the presence. They were hungry for the word. They were hungry for Jesus. That makes a difference. They have nothing over there, but yet they have everything. And we have everything over here, and yet we have nothing. I promise you, we are spiritual bankrupt in America. I, I uh, places where uh, difficult places, third world countries, um, the, the the smell, the stench uh, is would almost gag you. 
but you preach. I, I remember, um, and uh, my, uh, the first church in Nicaragua that Morgan and I went to to preach, and, and excuse me, it wasn't the first church, but it was one of the first churches that we were, maybe it's the second church, but anyway, we, we took a, a couple vehicles to get up there. It's this mountain or whatever we were going up. There's no road. Uh, the road, you think the roads in Marion are bad. These were awful. These were terrible. There was no road. It's just, it's just ditches and con uh, rock and, and, and just it was awful. And the car that we had had no shocks. He had four of us in this little itty-bitty car, and it had no shocks. I'm not kidding you. Now listen to me. You say, oh, it had some shocks. No, the thing had no shocks. And it would beat you half to death by the time you got up there. And so we finally got up on this, this, this mountain of some sort there in Nicaragua. And, and there was this tin shed. I've got pictures of this. I lie not. There was this tin shed. And it's already 100 degrees there, 105 degrees with 125% humidity, if you know what I'm talking about. And we go inside of this, this tin shed. And, and, and you had, it was filled with people and filled with kids. It was jam-packed with people. There was one of the kids there that were there wearing Sister Alberta's dress that she had made that we sent over there. And, and it was just hot as all can be. I mean, it was hotter than hot. And I mean, sweating profusely. I mean, just draining and dripping off of me like crazy. My clothes were soaked. And, and they had little, they had, it was a dirt floor, and, and I, I don't even think they had any electricity. If I remember right, I can't remember altogether if they did or not. And, uh, and if they did, it wasn't much. It might have been a light bulb in the middle of the thing. I don't know, but dirt floors and, 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 the, and, the, and the chairs and broken down chairs and plastic chairs and broken down metal chairs, there really wasn't much to it at all. But those people came because they were hungry for God. And you know what? The presence of the Lord, God poured out his glory in that place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All because they were hungry for the Lord. They came with faith, believing God. They, had, they were dirt poor. They had nothing, but yet they had everything. And I find today in America we have everything, but yet we have nothing. I'm telling you the truth. I, I don't know except you come with me sometime to experience and encounter what I'm talking about. After it was all over the service and everything, I looked out there, and there's this, there's this lake out there. And uh, I asked them about that lake, and, and they said, yeah, they said, the water's, the water's warm, the water's hot. And I was thinking because it's so hot there that the water was hot. No, no, no. They said, that's the mouth of a volcano. I said, you're standing on a volcano right now. <laughs> well, on top of a volcano to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, Amen. People are hungry for the Lord. They desired God. Many times I'll come to the office or I'll come into the sanctuary here during the day and I, 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 I can sense the presence of God and I just, I need direction. I need his word. I need his power. I need to be renewed and I just come and wait upon the Lord, wait on God. You know, a fisherman, he'll go out and, and he'll throw his line in the water and uh, he'll wait all day long. A fisherman will do that. He'll wait all day long, man, just out there, you know, got that line in the water. And, uh, and uh, you know, the question is, what is he waiting for? That fisherman goes out there, and he waits all day long. Yeah, no problem waiting there. And what's he waiting for, my friend? He's waiting on a tug on the line. That's what he's waiting for. And as we wait on the Lord, we are waiting for that tug in our hearts of God, the Holy Ghost. The tug of inspiration as we wait upon the Lord. We want the tug of the Holy Ghost. We want the tug of God's presence, the tug of God's renewing and refreshing in our hearts and lives. That's all we're waiting for. Waiting on God is not time wasted. We're waiting on the tug of the Holy Spirit on our hearts. Glory to God. That's what we're waiting for. Amen. Hallelujah. Some have quit praying. They've quit waiting. They've quit trying. Why? I'll tell you why. One word, unbelief. That's the word. That is the reason because of unbelief. Unbelief is choking you out of the spiritual blessings that God has for you. Unbelief. Some have become unfaithful because of what? Because of unbelief. The root of it is unbelief. You can make all the excuses you want, but the root of it is that you no longer believe. Israel wandered in the wilderness because of what? Because of unbelief. You might be in a wilderness right now. And maybe perhaps it's because you quit believing. You're walking in circles, wandering with no direction. 
because of the sin of unbelief. But my friend, I want to encourage you tonight that if you'll come back to God, if you'll come back to Isaiah 40 and 31, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You'll exchange your strength for God's strength. It'll be supernatural strength that God gives you. You'll renew your strength. You'll mount up with wings as eagles. You shall run and not grow weary. You shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Because God is faithful. Hallelujah. Waiting on the Lord is a good thing. Believing God is a good thing. Trusting God's a good thing. Praying is a good thing. Seeking God's face is a good thing. Persistence is a good thing. Hallelujah. And God blesses it. Amen. I want the former and the latter rain. I want the presence and the spirit of God. Amen. Would you stand with me please tonight? Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Praise God tonight. Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah. Almighty God, we give you glory. God, we give you glory. Hallelujah. God, we praise you tonight. Lord, we worship you tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Stir my heart, Lord. Stir my faith, Lord. Stir me tonight, God, I pray in the name of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. I just want to invite the church to come stand with me tonight. Let's worship the Lord together up here in the front. Just come and let's praise him. Let's worship him. Let's worship him tonight. Glory to God. Glory to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Just come and open your arms up to the Lord tonight by faith. Come tonight and just say, God, I want to be renewed in your presence. I want to be renewed in your power. As I worship you, put something into it. Believe God by faith. Oh, don't let unbelief creep in. Don't let unbelief rob you of what God has for you. Don't let unbelief take the spiritual blessings that the Lord has through Jesus Christ. Faith is the key. Maybe you feel weak, maybe you feel tired, maybe you feel weary. But my beloved friends, I tell you tonight that our God reigns, our God's living, our God's alive. He's Lord. Amen. He's Lord. He's Lord. Hallelujah. So what are we going to do? We're going we're gonna to throw our line in and we're going to wait until we get a tug on that line. Just wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I invite you to a prayer meeting? Can I invite you to seek the face of the Lord here tonight? Praise God. Praise the Lord. Say, God, I come to you by faith. I come to you by faith. Hallelujah. I come to the Lord by faith tonight, God. I give you my all. I surrender my all to you tonight. I wait upon the Lord, Father. I wait upon the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Cry out to the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. Don't you love Jesus? I praise you, Lord, tonight. Hallelujah. I give you praise and glory. Glory, Father. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 In the name of the Lord. God, touch. God, minister, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't want you to be embarrassed. I don't want you to be ashamed. I want you to have the freedom and the liberty just to worship God tonight. Just to worship the King of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. Our Lord. He is God. He's our Savior. Our Redeemer. Our Healer. Hallelujah. I come into His presence tonight to be renewed and strengthened in the Holy Ghost. I need Him. Oh, hallelujah. I can't run in my own might. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by my Spirit, says the Lord. Folks, I'm trying to tell you, you can't do it in your own strength. You can't do it in your own power. You can't do it in your own might. You need God. You just don't know how much you know you need Him. We all need Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Let your voices be heard unto God. Let your voices be heard. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God. Hallelujah. My Lord. 
Jesus, hallelujah. My Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah. My Lord, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, we praise you, Lord. Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you glory, God. Jesus, my Lord, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, my Lord, exalted one. Jesus, sing it now. Jesus, God, we praise your holy name tonight. Jesus, oh Lord, holy and anointed one. Jesus, your name is like honey on my lips, your spirit like water to my soul, your word is a lamp unto my feet, Jesus, I love you. God, we praise your holy name tonight. Oh, we glorify you, Lord. Jesus, my Lord, holy and anointed one, Jesus, oh Lord, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Jesus, risen and exalted one. Jesus, your name is like honey on my lips. Your spirit like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I sing that again, your name. I love you. Your name is like honey on my your spirit like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Right, right. Some of us are so bound, so bound. Hallelujah. It's time to be set free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come to Jesus. 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 Come to Jesus right now. Come to him right now. Oh, Lord Jesus. God, we need a renewed strength from you. We need a power from on high. I pray in the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, strengthen us as your people. Strengthen the church, Lord. Empower the church, Lord, I pray. Hallelujah. My Lord Jesus, God, we praise you, Lord. Glorify your holy name. Lord, we need you. Your very presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, oh God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, I'm going to ask you, church, to pray for your pastor tonight. Um, I'm just having some health battles and issues right now. I could use your prayer. And also, I just want to be refilled with the Holy Ghost. I, I don't mind asking. I don't mind coming to the Lord. I don't mind praying. I, I just, I know that he's the answer. And I would just like to ask you to, to pray for me. For I know the devil's fighting very hard right now. I knew he would. This is no surprise to me. And I, I understand the tactics of the enemy. I realize that. But I just know this, that God is faithful. And if you as the church, if you would have enough faith and strength tonight, if you would pray for me, I would greatly appreciate it. Ask God to touch your pastor. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come around me, church. Come on. Let's believe God together. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Complete healing, Lord. I want healing, God. I want the healer. God, I want your touch. I want the healer. I want healing from you, Lord. I pray in the name of the Lord. I know I don't deserve it. But God, I pray for your mercy and your grace. I pray for the healer. I pray for the healer, Lord. I pray. Oh, God. Oh, God. God, my Lord, God, my Lord, I pray. Oh, God, my Lord, I pray. I pray, I believe you, Lord, by faith. I believe you, Lord. Hallelujah. If you want the Holy Ghost, ask God for the Holy Ghost. If you want renewing, ask God to renew you tonight. Hallelujah. If your vessel's running dry, ask God to refill it. Ask God to refill the vessel. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, my God. My God, my God, my God, my God. Another cut of a cushion, another cold. Another kit of a cushion, another cold. Another kit of a cold. Another kit of a cushion, another cold. Another kit of a cold. My Lord, I praise you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. Todd, I worship you, Lord. Another cut of a kill, the Baba Masha cut of a cold. Another kit of a cushion, another cold. Oh, Lord, hallelujah, Lord. I pray by the Spirit of God. We pray in the name of Jesus for the healer, the healer to come and to touch my sister now. Lord, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to restore her mind and her memory. I pray, Father, in the name of the Lord. God, you know, Lord, you know, thank God that you are sovereign God. Nothing with you is impossible. 
So I pray in the name of Jesus, your touch, your power, your spirit, that her strength would be renewed, her heart. God, I pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. is no respecter of persons. Anybody, whoever you are, you want the Lord, you want God, you cry out to the Lord. You go out in the middle of the cornfield cry out to God. I mean, it don't matter. You got, that young man, he said, get married this year, sometime later this year, went out in the field, went out in the forest, and went out in the woods, prayed for the Holy Ghost, got the Holy Ghost, hungry for God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The parable of the ten virgins scares me. Five wise and five foolish. Say, why, Pastor Mark, does that parable scare you? I'll tell you why. Because there are going to be people that think they're going to make it that are not. That's why. There are people that think they're going to make it, and they won't. You know, when it comes to our time, I don't want that preacher or that pastor have to guess as to where I'm at. I want him to know. <laughs> he's with Jesus. I know people say, well, he's in a better place. Don't you ever say that. He's with Jesus. He's with Jesus. Hallelujah. He's with Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am.
Very good word. Very good word. If we have aught against anyone, make it right. Because I believe it hinders our prayers. It hinders our relationship with the Lord. In fact, I believe, according to the scriptures, unforgiveness can keep us out of heaven. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown merciful. Amen. Very good word. Thank you. our lack of praying that's hindering things that take place in the supernatural and in the spirit. That's right. There, just think about the very possibility there could be people not saved today because of our lack of praying. Our lack of praying. Mm. Mm. Charles Finney was praying, preaching revival. There's a young lady in that revival and she was almost saved, just almost there. Night after night, preaching. And they'd go, you know how they'd go, six weeks revival. And that night after night, she just wouldn't give. She, he just knew God was dealing with her heart. Conviction was all over her. But she wouldn't, she wouldn't give her heart to the Lord. She wouldn't surrender to God. She wouldn't come to the altar. And then there was the night when he preached and she didn't even show up. He went to prayer about this. And he's seeking the face of God. One of the books I read in my office about him. And... The Lord revealed to him that it was her parents that were holding her back. It was their lack of praying. True story. And so Charles Finney went to their house, found out where they lived, and went to their house. And he confronted the parents. And he says, it's because of your lack of praying, your daughter's not saved. It's because of your lack of intercession, your lack of seeking God, your lack of dedication is holding your daughter back. They were appalled, like, no, it couldn't be us, not us. No, you're kidding. No, no. And so once he got the parents to surrender and sell out to the Lord, then guess what? The daughter surrendered and sold out to the Lord. Sometimes it's our holding back that's holding other people back. Sometimes it's our holding back in the church that holds other people back in the church. You know that? So what the Lord revealed to you today is right on as well. How about we sell out? Sell out. Amen. People sold out to that ice cream stand over there. <laughs> I'm sold out to Jesus. I got something that tastes better. The Bible says taste and see the Lord is good. I got something that lasts longer. I got something that won't melt. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got something better. Amen. I've tasted the heavenly gift. I've tasted of the Lord. And when you've had a taste of the Lord Jesus, when you've experienced God, encountered Christ in your life, you don't want anything else. Everything else fades in comparison. Now you can go over there, friends, get your ice cream. I'm just saying, I want to put the spiritual first. God, amen. 
Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I, I, I saw those people out in that line out there out front. I said, Lord God, I want to. I told Jeffrey, I said, bring your sound system. We'll do some street preaching sometime out there. I'm thinking, folks, come to church. Go to church. Go to church. Go to church. Mm. Well, let's stand together tonight. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord God, for your goodness and grace. Thank you, Father God, for this time. This time tonight, Lord, is not time wasted. We've come to commune with you. We've come to worship you. This is a good time. This is the right thing to do, Father, as we spend time in prayer, time in meditation, time in worship, time in your word, Father. This is good, Lord God. I pray because I know that, Lord, in this atmosphere, in your presence, God, I know that there's a renewing. I know that there's a strengthening of thy spirit upon us, Lord God. I'm asking you to bless the body of Christ, the brothers and sisters and the Lord, your children, and I pray that they would be renewed in their strength. And I pray, Father, that their faith would be revived. I pray, God, that their prayer life would be rekindled. I pray, Father, that there'd be something speaking within their heart, Father, of the Lord. I pray, God, that uh, as the fisherman throws his, cast his line into the, into the water, Father God, waiting on the tug of that fish, I pray that we'll wait on the tug of the Holy Ghost of God. Lord, I pray in the name of the Lord for the body of Christ. Strengthen my brothers. Be with them. Bless them. Help them, Father God. Reveal yourself to them through the word, I pray. I thank you and I ask this tonight in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. God bless all of you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.